This is the Night Wolf howling at you, and once more, we're going to take a swim in the Well of Secrets to head to the Legends of Dragonor, so we can take a look at Raytor, the heroic leader, which I thought Barbaro already had that uh, that name. So maybe what they should have done, considering the background of the character from the mini comic, heroic guardian of Icemere might have been a better choice for that. If we turn them around and take a look at the back of the box. We've got an informational blurb. Raytor, the heroic leader, homeworld, and Terra. Special ability, mighty strength. Weapon of choice, battle axe. But he comes with a mace. Raytor, the guardian of the dormant volcano cryofire. In the frozen region of Icemere is the twin demon brother of Onitor. Peaceful and charitable, he is his brother's opposite in every respect. In Icemere, he protects the mystical ecosphere under the Glacier Dome with strange animals and volcanic spirit beings known as the Magma People. When Onitor decided to invade Icemere with Oscuro, Raytor was once again forced to confront his twin brother. And still, no matter how many times Raytor has to fight Onitor, he will always be bound to his brother and will always try to protect him from the dangers of the worlds that they travel. Huh? I'm a little confused by that one. So only Raytor is trying to protect Onitor from the worlds? Plus... I'm just trying to remember. I don't was only Taurus Homeworld and Terra? I thought they came from someplace else and then ended up there. Anyway, let's go ahead and open this sucker up. We have with us the informational blurb paper that shows us what parts actually come off of this figure. And the ones that you can basically mix and match with everything else. Here, the call from Yandara. Each Legends of Dragonor figure is modular and can be separated at certain joints. Parts can be mixed and matched with the other figures in the line. These are the only swappable parts. Do not force any other pieces apart. Mwahaha. And of course, we have the Fire at Ice Mirror comic. I've already done a review on it. And with any luck, this week, towards the end of the week, we will also do a... Or I will hopefully be posting a actual reading of the comic. For anybody who's actually interested in doing it. Doing it. Listening to it. Ah! Wow. Oh, dear Lord. Alrighty. So, apparently, this is made into two parts. And painted. So, there's that. I might have to glue that in later. Of course, I said that about some of the other parts within this line that I didn't get around to doing anything with anyway. We, of course, have the high-density plastic. The little cover that helps hold them in place. And finally, we can pop our figure out. Right over here is a blue version of Onitor. Comes with all the same parts and the same weapon. Even though it says his weapon of choice is a battle axe. Would have been kind of cool if they'd found a way, if they'd given us like a little attachment for inside this mouth thing to turn this into an axe. That would have been awesome. He's got the same demonic face sculpt.
I'm blue, da bo dee da bo die. Um, anyway. I'm trying to decide if I like this color scheme better than the Oni Tour one or not. And I kind of think what it really is, is I don't like the green that's on Oni Tour, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Articulation wise, this is the Legend of Dragon Noir, where everything is a modular peg design. So we basically get the 360 spin here on the head and we can pop it off. The arm is also on a peg. We can spin it up and back. However, it is hindered by the shoulder pauldrons of his armor. And if you try to force it, you will pop it off. We can spin the wrist forearm area and also pop that off. The waist spins at a 360 and we can pop it off. The leg can kick forward a little bit and kick back a little bit. And instead of kicking out, everything pops apart. I like how it actually landed kind of upright still. And of course, we can spin the ankle twist here. Boot cut, I should say. And we can pop it off. Bro's got some nice little clawed fingers going on there. This is a higher grade plastic than what we get in most toys. So any of these spikies that are sharper feeling actually do kind of hurt a little bit. In comparison to the other toy, we have Raytor with his brother Onitor. You can tell they're brothers because they share the same eyes. Anyway. Uh, like I said, I think the only thing I dislike about the Oni Tour, and especially after seeing this one, is just the green on here. Blue would have been kind of cool to use because then it definitely would have gone a and done like the whole twin comparison thing a little bit closer. Uh, I'm not too fond of the color of the mace here. Um, I think I would have liked to have seen that in red instead, maybe. But as you can see, they are twins, same mold. Paint apps all seem to be in the same place. They did not paint any of the details on the shorts, uh, or the belt, I should say. And of course, he's got the whole harness thing in multiple places. This is very traditional He-Man, actually, with the way this harness is designed. And it looks like this figure was uh, molded in white, perhaps, and then painted although this interior part is a separate piece from the outer part so it's possible that just that's the only part that was white i don't want to do an armor swap on these two and i am probably going to hate myself for doing it Yeah, I think I like Onitor better in the red and yellow armor than the green and yellow armor. I just don't like that green color, to be perfectly honest. But overall, as part of the figures go, uh, this might be another one of those cases where I kind of like the color scheme a little bit better, mostly because they got rid of that green. It just, it just doesn't look right to me. I, I don't like the way it sets up. 
Um, but I do like the red skin. Like, I think Onitor looks great in the Raytor armor. And if there was a way to actually swap out the other parts, I would probably do that as well. Anyway, I think that will conclude our look at Raytor. Pretty cool looking. Color scheme looks pretty good. I think Onitor could have been improved with this color harnessing. Or they could have actually done maybe the yellow harness with the red highlights instead of the green. And that probably would look pretty good too. Unfortunately, these figures are a little too expensive to do that myself. So I won't. But anyway, please let me know what you think. Uh, have you considered buying the Legends of Dragonor figures yet? Or are you still on the fence for them? I, I've heard from some people who just don't seem to like the limited articulation. But this is still going back to that kind of 80s style. And they're going to be doing kind of a subline with this. Or I don't know if a subline or a sister line maybe might be a better wear choice. I think it's called the Galaxy Warriors. And it's going to be based on like another brand from the 80s or another He-Man ripoff from the 80s might be a better way to put it. Where it was more space based. Although the two figures that I've seen so far pretty much look like they could just be in this world anyway. Of course it could also just be a Comic Con exclusive set too. And maybe not a full line. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. And remember, if you hated it. Feel free to send it to somebody you hate to torture them. Peace and love.